Okay, um, so I have the a bit impossible task to explain why Apache Arrow is relevant for geospatial in, in four minutes. Um, so let's start with what is Apache Arrow. Um, at its core, it's a specification how to represent tabular data in memory. Um, but on, on top of that, you have yeah some other specifications, a lot of variety of languages implementing this specification uh, with additional tools. So you get an, a multi-language toolbox uh, to move data around in this format to process data in this format. Um, so for example, if you want to move data from R to Python or from any language to another language or load data from storage, you might have potentially have a lot of possible interactions. Um, but because if, if those languages can all speak R, we can easily move data for, uh, from one data system to another or share an implementation of a parquet reader uh, or something like that. So this is actually already reality uh, right now for many uh, tools. Just to be clear, it's not only about moving data around, also uh, it, for actual in-memory uh, processing on this uh, data. Apache Parquet is something else that is often mentioned at the same time, uh, but just to be clear, so Apache Parquet is a file format. It already existed before Apache Arrow, actually. Um, but it's also focused on columnar data, um, and yeah, it has complex uh, compression uh, techniques, but so um, it's a widely used file format. The reason that it's often mentioned at the same time is that many of the Arrow implementations also have a parquet reader, given that it's very, very much aligned. And so historically, the uh, reason that many people were using PyArrow was to read parquet files. Um, but so one of the, 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 yeah, the things that Apache Arrow wants to enable, things like yeah, better data access, easier to move data around, efficient uh, in-memory data structures, sharing implementation, that's all things that are relevant for uh, geospatial as well. So for example, um, GDAL can read a variety of file formats, um, but this form, like when GDAL is reading something that still needs to move, uh, be moved into actual uh, library that is using a GDAL on like Python library or QGIS, PostGIS, um, and um, yeah, there is a new upcoming feature in GDAL that GDAL can export a layer as arrow memory formats. And so that means that at once any data system that already understands arrow uh, gets relatively cheap access to everything that GDAL uh, supports. And uh, for example, uh, if you have a Rust data frame library that is built on top of arrow, they can uh, directly get access to uh, data supported by GDAL as well. Um, this doesn't necessarily need to be limited to GDAL. We can imagine a potential future where this is uh, used uh, more to share data around. So we have Apache Parquet, a widely used file format. We have Apache Arrow, which is becoming the de facto standard uh, to represent data in memory. Um, there is a increasingly uh, uh, big e ecosystem of tools that Nowadays, support Apache Arrow. And so the opportunity here for geospatial is um, yeah, that we can, uh, by adopting those formats and standards, to get access to this uh, ecosystem. Do we need something more? Maybe a little bit. And that's what we dubbed GeoParquet and GeoArrow. So GeoParquet is not a new file format. It's just agreeing on how do we store geospatial uh, data in Parquet. GeoArrow is also not a new memory format. It's just agreeing on how are we going to store vector data in uh, GeoArrow. And so, for example, yeah, here there are some links if you want to know more um, to the slides and to the long version and some interesting blog posts. Thank you, Joyce. I have to cut you. Uh, thank you very much, Craig. Please.